It's good to see you. Lovely to see you too. I think this is our first time seeing each other in real life. Okay. In real life. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who might be watching this and somehow don't know anything about this play, can you give a brief summary of what, what Slave Play is about? It's a play that's about the sort of original sin of America and the unhealed wound of that sin and how that um, has permeated through how we perform racial entanglement, how we embody racial entanglement, and like how racial entanglement haunts us. I saw it twice and I wrote about it in the Times um, in an op-ed and it was about what it was like to see it with a mostly black audience and then a more mixed, uh, more heavily skewed, not black audience. And that was in part because you created this initiative that I'm not sure if it's completely unprecedented, but definitely is not usually done and might we might be seeing more of it in the future, um, where you reached out to primarily Black uh, journalists, theater people, and just audiences and also students uh, to come and see the show for um, and experience the play amongst each other. And I, I felt as though there was a very marked difference um, between those two experiences. Yeah, I mean, I 100% consider it to be a success. I mean, I think when I got the opportunity to start writing plays, I knew already that the audience that I thought about the most, who I felt was missing from the theater, were audiences that looked like me. And that's not just my race, that's my age, that's my interest. So I wanted to start by just saying that I recognize that to be a millennial or in Generation Z means that you cannot afford a $200 ticket on a Thursday night to something you don't really know. So for that night that was all Black theater, um, it was essentially free for almost everyone. I never thought that Black people didn't come to the theater because they couldn't afford it. I thought that Black people weren't coming to the theater because they weren't invited, and they weren't invited in a way that felt like it was building a relationship and not just like a transaction for the moment. Like I wanted to say like, come, let's commune and let's see this building as a space that's not alienating, but as a space that we can inhabit and inhabit for years to come. I, I think your point about it's not necessarily about the money, it's about just the intention and, and, and being intentional about it. Because I think Black people obviously want to see ourselves on screen, on the stage, everywhere and obviously we need more of that but also we do enjoy things that don't have anything to do with us. My mom and my grandmother never needed representation in order to like fall in love with a narrative but they did yeah. need to feel like invited to the table even if that invitation right. is just like the ladies at your church being like have you seen Taken? Taken's amazing you know. <laughs> yeah yeah the Tonys are not happening this year. Have you uh, thought anything about like had you been nominated? What was your thinking going into that before it was all canceled? You know what's wild is that unlike most other people, I have not thought about the Tonys at all. Like, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... Lies. I'm, I'm really sad that they aren't happening. Uh, it was so exhilarating to be on this ride, and it's like moving in all the directions that I had dreamed of a play moving, you know, wherein it's hitting parts of the culture that don't normally have plays like hit, you know? And yet uh, I haven't had a moment to just stop and process it or even like appreciate any of that until now. It's been this great gift that 14 year old Jeremy could have never dreamed of, you know? <laughs> Thanks so much, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure. Oh my God, thank you so much, Aisha. This is so fun. <laughs> We originally had our conversation uh, right uh, on Memorial Day weekend. And obviously June. now we're at the end of the first week of June and so much has happened since then. And, you know, it wouldn't feel right to not kind of circle back since Slave Play deals with so many of like similar issues about anti-Blackness and racism that we're seeing now in the wake of George Floyd's death and the protests that have been happening. First, I want to ask you, like, how are you doing right now? Emotionally, mentally? Yeah, I feel like it's because for a lot, in a lot of ways, I've been thinking about these things for many years. And like most Black people, I think, have been thinking about these things for many years. I think emotionally, 
um, I am in a better situation than a lot of other people I know. So I think that for some people, um, there had been like this sort of like veneer of safety or this veneer that we were getting to um, a better place. And um, I think that this swiftly um, shifted that. Like I've had m years and years and years of setup for this moment. And now I'm just in like action brain. Mm. How are you feeling? Um, so I think I'm in a similar place as you. I feel just like angry more than anything else um, and frustrated. And it just really, to me, feels like deja vu. What happened then and has happened before is that with each new um, major moment, I do think more people awaken to something. And like the people who want to go back and take the nap and go back to sleep, go back to sleep. But like for the most part, I think with each like jolt of an awakening, um, culturally, we should move forward just a little bit, you know? You tweeted recent, like I think for when the protests were first starting, um, asking theaters who have shown plays written, written by and about black uh, creators and artists to, you know, do the work and show up and like ask, what are you going to do? The thing that theaters could all do that would like actually change something is like doing a season where all the plays are black plays. Like just once, twice, three years, four years. If black lives matter to you, like do that, you know? I mean, I get the sense that we will see a lot more art and work that is addressing this moment um, in interesting ways. Do you, do you have that sense too? I definitely think there will be a lot of plays written in this moment, and especially about the like, police brutality and black bodies again. Um, because I do think that even for some of the black writers who have gotten really um, popular in the last couple of years because of their the ways in which they've written and uh, sort of like exposed and expounded on like race and racism in America, I think that like there was this like fatigue that even we had after like being asked to give so much back to the world after we had like um, expelled all this stuff on the page. Like, it was like, we did this, you write a Fairview, you write a slave play, you write a, you know, Strange Loop. And then all anyone wants to do is ask you more questions about, like, how did you come up with this? And for you, the, how you came up with it is painfully obvious. Like, you've been black in your skin for this long. So I think that there's, like, this feeling that there could be a fatigue, it, especially for myself. And then the minute that this happened, I was like, yep, yeah, I guess I'm just going to jump back in it because I, you know, like, I now can do the thing because rage is running through me afresh and anew.